New laws that are coming in restricting foreign care workers from bringing family members to the UK. That comes into force later today. Well, it's part of a wider government plan to reduce migration figures by 300,000, with the Home Secretary calling the measures robust and fair. For more on this, we're joined by political editor at Tortoise, Kat Neal. And Kat, good morning. Um, can you explain this in, in layperson's terms? Sure. So uh, last year we saw a uh, spike in the migration figures above 700,000, the highest that we've ever seen. And so these uh, measures are intended to try and reduce that. Part of that, not the, actually the biggest amount uh, 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 contributing towards that, was the number of care workers coming in and bringing their dependents. Yes. And that is what this is uh, aimed at uh, tackling today. So there will be restrictions now around people who can bring dependents and also uh, the uh, salary levels are also going up. So this could mean that a total of 300,000 people who were eligible to come to the UK last year now won't be able to do so. Are there any government plans to fix that gap in the care uh, sector? Well, this is one of the problems. Um, the, 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 you know, the reality is that the salaries are not high enough. Uh, otherwise, more British people would go for those jobs. And they talk very much about the need to kind of get more sort of homegrown workers into that industry. But they're not going there. And, that's, and that is not something that you can just solve by creating more absences. This is what, this is what I don't get. And, and, and I know I'm, I'm a lone voice on this. And I wish maybe you could explain it to me. Mm -hmm. So we're paying people not enough, it seems, in terms of what British workers would expect, mm. to come to the United Kingdom to, 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 to be part of our health service. We're now saying, come for money that we wouldn't pay our own people, but don't bring your families. That's fine. But I always bring it back to not the people who are mentally disabled, me are mentally uh, ill or, or, or disabled, but there are people on the dole who could work. What's the maths between how much we pay them for doing very little and spending money on training them to take the jobs in the NHS so we don't have to bring people over and pay them ridiculous amounts of money. Well, Why can't people be made to go to work? Because, surely in that instance, they're getting more from sitting on the dole. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, I mean, we have seen Rishi Sunak uh, address this over the yeah. weekend. He's talking about making it more difficult for people, squeezing benefits. They want to get particularly the sort of older uh, workforce back in um, to try and boost the economy. And, of course, we've just had the budget where we were looking at GDP figures and per capita... Uh, the country has not grown for 18 months. Mm -hmm. um, and this is part of the problem. This is, this is, um, it's a lack of uh, wage growth in uh, sectors like this that is contributing to it. What's the answer? I think people have to recognise that things like social care do cost more money than we previously have accepted, but that means higher taxes. Yeah. And that's not something that people <laughs> want, particularly yeah. at the moment. And that's not the way it's been advertised by the Tory party, is it? Well, actually, if we're going to reduce immigration in this respect, it will mean higher taxes. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, gosh, right. Well, moving on to a different story now. Uh, three former Home Secretaries warned the government against politicising anti-extremism. Mm. Can you just take us through the story? Yeah, sure. So uh, this week we are expecting Michael Gove, the Community Secretary, to set out a new definition of extremism. It won't uh, be set in law. It will be sort of guidance, but it is very important and it's something that has been looked at for many months, if not years now. Um, however, there are concerns from all different wings of the Conservative Party, leaving aside the political opponents, of course. You've got Priti Patel, you've got uh, Amber Rudd, who was a Home Secretary under Theresa May, and Sajid Javid. Now, they are not necessarily people that would ordinarily share a world view, mm. but they have come together to sign a letter uh, saying it's very important that we make sure that this doesn't become any kind of hindrance to free speech uh, because there has been some suggestion that in seeking to clamp down genuine extremism, it may have a sort of chilling effect on free speech that might impact things like sort of the, the trans debate or other areas of, of sort of public discourse. It's interesting, isn't it? Because, um, sorry to repeat myself, but we were saying in the first hour, you know, you weren't here, but... You used, if you wanted to have a discussion about immigration 10 years ago, you were deemed as racist. I think this is a discussion that needs to be had, but absolutely about free speech. And absolutely, it shouldn't be aimed at anybody than, uh, than other than, than the specific people. And we know there are thousands of people who march who do it in the right way. But there are increasing, whether it's just stop or whatever it is, there are fanatics. And surely 
as a country, we have a right to do something about that, don't we? We do, um, and I think that there are certainly... Uh, the last few months has kind of shown up that there are gaps in, in the way mm. that this is uh, approached, and we've spoken before about the sort of policing of it. Mm. I think there is uh, some suggestion that perhaps if there was more clarity, it would be easier for the police to actually right. manage some of these protests. But, of course, there is always the danger of unintended consequences with bringing in new kind of guidance like this, that it could affect legitimate free speech um, and so therefore it's, it's something that I think is going to be quite challenging and yeah. quite a big political hot potato not just Conservatives versus Labour and the Lib Dems but actually internally as well and it doesn't appear as though actually it's been signed off by the cabinet yet and we know that there are some big free speech advocates sitting around the cabinet table so it may fall at, at a fairly early hurdle it might be that you know things don't quite come off this week well thank you so much to Kat Neela for making sense of it all thank this you. morning Kat from Tortoise there